which uses digital platform to recruit students. So that's how we are trying to uh, like brand Edvoy, which is our own study portal. And as you can see on um, like you know the sc uh, the screen, um, Edvoy is basically Education Voyages. It's a product of IEC Abroad, where students can find solutions, everything related to education abroad. Uh, so you can choose your courses. You have more than 25,000 courses to look into and explore. You can also have a um, lot of options of universities there, country specifically. You can choose on whether you want to study in, in a specific destination. Um, you can also connect with our counselors online, um, virtually. So you will find all the contact details as well. Uh, and what we are trying to do is all the universities in there are like, you know, all the, I mean, you will find all the courses as well as updated information in terms of tuition fee, um, entry requirements, eligibility criteria, and so on. Uh, so you can choose your own courses and you can get expert advice uh, from our panel of counselors. Also, there is a possibility of uploading your documents through Edvoy so that the applications can get processed and you can get your offers. So Conestoga College is also um, uh, mentioned in the Edvoy. So uh, we will leave uh, the link uh, to you uh, at the end of the session and you can go and explore the website. So, um, so I've given a brief on Edvoy and uh, yeah, Mariana, if you could just like uh, go into the next slide, please. Yeah, so um, we have, as, as Mariana rightly said, we have offices all around the, all, all around the globe, uh, 17 offices. And uh, we have counselors who speak regional languages. Um, we have, uh, and they are experienced counselors. They look into the students' profiles and they give you the right information. Uh, on top of it, our, you, as you can see on the, um, like, you know, or, or on our, website we have like institution and course selections we look into each and every student and uh, give the right universities some universities meet up the language proficiency some do not so we look into that as well and um, yeah so you can connect with our counselors to have end-to-end -end solutions when it comes to education abroad services um, so let me not waste any time and i will put you to uh, to banu uh, who will introduce uh, the college to us and um, all the panelists and uh, I'm sorry, all the students who are attending this webinar. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, I can assure you it's going to be a very, very informative session. So please feel free to leave your questions on the chat box. And at the end of the session, um, Banu will be kind enough to address those. So over to you, Banu. Thank you, Reshma. Thank you, uh, Mariana. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, good morning from here in Canada, but good evening for you guys. Uh, first of all, I hope uh, you and your families and your friends are doing good in these uncertain times. Uh, please be careful and please take care of yourself. Um, thank you very much for joining us today um, to gain some information and knowledge about Conestoga College. Uh, the pattern today would be that I would take 15, 20 minutes just to give an overview about Waterloo region where we are located and uh, Conestoga College, but I would like to keep a good amount of time towards the end for question and answer. And the reason I'm saying that um, to, to keep the presentation a little bit shorter uh, is because uh, I'm just assuming that um, you would be knowing a lot about Conestoga already. Conestoga has been very, very popular in India. Um, we have the highest number of Indian students studying in any college or university in Canada today. So before I start, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, IEC team for past three, four days, we have been doing seminars. You, you saw that they have offices um, in various countries. So past four or five days, we have been doing amazing uh, webinars all around the world. Uh, and so I would like to thank them for this platform, for allowing me to be with them and connect with potential students and parents uh, around the world and uh, answer any questions uh, they might have. Uh, as uh, Reshma and uh, Mariana said, my name is Banu Vashisht and I work as the Associate Vice President Business Development at Conestoga College. I have been with Conestoga for 11 years now 
And before that, I worked for another school for nine years. So in total, um, 20 years in the industry for me. Um, I remember the first time I came to India in 2000 for recruitment. At that time, from India, only eight or 900 students all over Canada, eight to 900 students used to come to study in Canada. And in 2004, that number rose to 1800. And at that time, my boss and myself, we went out uh, to party just because we were so excited that the numbers from India are, are growing. And today it's like almost 100,000 students coming. And uh, it's a very exciting time for Canada. It's a very exciting time for us. And it is because of uh, partners like IEC uh, who give a very clear and honest um, information to our students and uh, Canada has gained so much popularity uh, around the world. Um, I'm very excited to be here today for a number of reasons and anytime I'm speaking to an audience, especially in India, I get very, very excited uh, doing it for 20 years, but still that feeling is same just because um, around 21, 22 years ago, I was sitting exactly where you are. Um, I came to Canada as an international student and uh, my journey so far has been amazing and uh, I would do it again if I, if I had to. Um, like you, when I was planning to study abroad, I had five options in front of me. I could have gone to UK, Australia, Canada, US or New Zealand. And after doing my research, I found that Canada would be the best place for me, even though at that time, Canadian economy or um, Canada as a higher education destination was not very popular. But I dug a little bit deeper. Uh, Canada is a land of immigrants. And I knew that uh, when I'm leaving my country, I want to go somewhere where I would be um, welcomed and uh, I would feel uh, feel at home and whoever I spoke to, not people in India, because sometimes um, I'm not talking about IEC, but there are some agents who tend to push one country over the other for various reasons. Um, and so I didn't want to rely on an agent at that time. I started talking to people who were already um, studying or living abroad. And my research told me that Canada is the best country. And that is 22 years ago. And it still stands true. Uh, Canada gives you an amazing platform. Uh, little things like students can work for 20 hours a week while they are studying. They can work full time when they have scheduled break. Uh, they get up to three years of work permit after finishing their education. And also they get a very clear shot towards applying for immigration. 20 years in the industry, I must have seen only five to seven international students going back home. And a lot of them go back home because of their own choice, not that they could not uh, get immigration. But all of them are either staying here in Canada and some of them have of course moved to uh, United States. Um, as Mariana mentioned at Conestoga College, we are located in Waterloo. Waterloo is the technology triangle of Canada and we are one hour away from Toronto by car. We are one of the fastest growing colleges uh, in, in, uh, the, uh, in the country and we have the second highest graduation rate in the province plus we also have the lowest loan default ratio uh, in the country. At Conestoga we offer more than 200 programs out of them, 181 programs are open for international students. We have nine campuses and uh, our delivery is in September, January and May. I'll come later on to the, uh, the college, uh, but let me just talk about where we are. Uh, I'm very sure that you know people in your life, I know for sure that people who have not gone to any kind of formal education after finishing their high school, after finishing their uh, class 12th. They have not gone to formal education, but they have either studied online or they have uh, done some kind of vocational studies. And today they are either uh, successful businessmen, they are vice presidents in companies or they are directors in companies. And I used to wonder that if success can be achieved like that, why would somebody come to Conestoga? I started uh, talking to people uh, of that uh, status and I came to know that these people are very successful because they surround themselves with the right kind of people. They network with the right kind of people and they create an ecosystem around themselves, right? Which uh, is their recipe for success. Um, when I look at Conestoga College and where we are located, fortunately, the region Waterloo, you know, it provides you with those opportunities ready-made. 
just as an example, there are over 1,500 technology companies in Waterloo region. Between Toronto and Waterloo, it's 85 kilometers. That is also called the Innovation Corridor of Canada. In that innovation corridor, including um, uh, in this industry in Waterloo region, there are 15,000 uh, technology companies. In Waterloo alone, there are uh, eight of Canada's largest technology companies, which call Waterloo home. For, for an example, um, Google Canada headquarters is only 10 minutes drive from our Waterloo campus. Our Waterloo campus is also our School of Information Technology. Besides that, Waterloo region has the top four largest urban population in Ontario with average household income of $84,000 a year as compared to Canada's average of only $78,000 a year. The employment rate of the region, Waterloo region, is 95%. It also has 20% less cost of living than any major cities in Ontario. Around 30% of people living in Waterloo region were not born in Canada. We are attracting the brains from around the world. Um, there was a report in December which said that in next two years, Waterloo region will need over 22,000 technology professionals. So, um, we are known for technology programs, but when technology grows with it, hospitality grows with it, businesses grow, financial services grow, uh, insurance grow. So technology brings a lot of other businesses in practice as well. And uh, the reason I'm saying this, because there will be a lot of students who are interested in other programs like business or hospitality or healthcare management. And they sometimes wonder that um, Waterloo region is known for technology. What about others? So I take Niagara Falls as an example, nothing against Niagara Falls, but just as an example, uh, Niagara Falls is known for tourism, but they don't have technology. They're known for hospitality, but they don't have other businesses growing as well. But when you have technology that attracts because there are people, people will get sick, that they need uh, health um, professionals, people need banking, people need restaurants, people need all those other kind of services which is surrounding uh, the technology hub. So um, this leads me to uh, talk about the Waterloo region's industry sector. It's very, very vibrant. And if you just see the various industries which are um, present in Waterloo region, that alone would give you a very good sign of the ecosystem that is created around Conestoga College and also gives you a platform to be successful. I strongly believe that you can take the horse to the water you cannot make the horse drink the water. That's why we have 89% um, overall placement rate and not 100% because maybe, I mean, uh, from somebody's point of view, college might be lacking one or two things. I don't see it, but that's okay. That's a different argument. But also um, there are students who do not take things very seriously and they don't take advantage of this platform which is given to them. So the industry sector includes uh, advanced manufacturing, aerospace, business and financial services, food processing, uh, water technologies, um, automotive, biotechnology, information technology, logistic and uh, uh, transportation, health and life sciences. And Waterloo Region is also Canada's largest startup ecosystem. Most companies in this industry sector uh, will have their Canada headquarters in Waterloo region. I've already spoken about uh, Google, uh, Sun Life, Manulife. They also have their uh, Canada headquarters in Waterloo region. And they are also uh, one of um, our employers. So these, all these companies, they come to Conestoga College to recruit our students, both at um, co-op level and also after their, their graduation. Conestoga College, focuses on three major, uh, three major areas, student satisfaction, student leadership, and student success. This philosophy has helped Conestoga College uh, become a very strong brand, both domestically and internationally. There are 24 government colleges in Ontario, and Conestoga is one of the very few colleges who, which has seen a positive growth in domestic numbers as well. There are a lot of colleges in Ontario where the domestic enrollment has gone down and they're relying heavily on international, but Conestoga has both domestic and international growing. Talking about international, around 10 years ago, Conestoga had less than 100 post-secondary international students from 30 countries. 
today. We are the second largest college in Canada. We have over 12,000 international students from 90 countries. We are also the largest college in Canada when it comes to Indian students. We have more than 9,000 uh, students from India studying into our one year certificate, two year diploma, three year advanced diploma, four year bachelor's degree, or our postgraduate program. We are very, very popular in India. Um, 10 years ago, we only had one student from India, and today, uh, 9,000, 9,500, somewhere there. Um, we are so big uh, that uh, last week I had a call from the Consulate General of India. Um, the, she's, she was calling to see how uh, students are doing. And uh, one of her comments was, that in India, you don't see colleges with uh, almost 10,000 Indian students and Conestoga here in Canada has that kind of number, which is uh, very impressive, number one. Number two, she's like, what I really like and admire about Conestoga is during this pandemic, not a single student from Conestoga has approached the Indian consulate with any kind of concern or complaint because uh, we are so much involved in students' lives. Um, our last semester, last two months of the last semester went online and now May we are going online. The support the student had from an academic point of view was unheard of. Even I was surprised and impressed how the professors were making themselves available late at night or early mornings whenever it was suitable for the kids. Plus, we had um, a lot of uh, other kind of um, psychological or um, uh, financial support for the students. Uh, all the members of international team and student services from the uh, uh, the college student service department, everybody is on board and student success is very, very important for us. And more importantly, students' health, both mental and physical, is ex of extreme importance. Uh, we believe that students have given us trust. They have left their parents, their home, and their friends, and they have chosen us. So it is our responsibility to stand with them in this extremely tough time. And we are doing it very beautifully. And when the uh, Consulate General told us that not a single concern, not a single complaint, uh, though they are hearing from other colleges, other universities across Canada, students are approaching Indian Consulate, nothing of that sort uh, from Conestoga. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, uh, players like IEC has played an important and very significant role in our growth. Besides that, uh, happy and successful students bring more students to our campuses, making us the largest college right now, as I said, uh, in Canada. I really admire Conestoga College for its uh, forward-looking, active learning and collaborative approach. So the industry sector I talked about is here. now. You as a student might wonder that, okay, that industry sector is there, Conestoga is here, you teach something, we go outside, we get a job. What is Conestoga College doing to take advantage of this platform which is out there? So what we do very beautifully is around 35% of our new program development committee or our existing program maintenance team comprises of leaders from that industry sector. They share with us what's in the future. We develop a new program or we modify an existing program to match the future needs of the industry, making our graduates job ready. Around 2012, Conestoga only had 16 postgraduate programs. Today, we have over 55 postgraduate programs, plus there are five more programs sitting with the ministry right now for, for their approval, and we, can, we might hear about it um, like next week or, or the following week, but then we will have 60. So that's kind of highest, one of the highest uh, offerings of postgraduate program in Canada. We also offer um, the highest number of bachelor's degree out, outside of Toronto in Canada. We have, as I mentioned, over 181 programs open for international. Overall, the college has got around 220 programs, but 181 programs are open for international students. 62 of them have got a very strong co-op component, and your co-op term can last anywhere from four months to 16 months, uh, depending upon the program you're, cho you're choosing. Though all uh, 181 programs are extremely strong and very much career focused and job oriented. But if you ask me that, uh, tell me one area which, would you, which you'll call that, yes, this is my strength. Like this is where I really stand out. 
um, that would be our IT and engineering. So our school of IT and our school of engineering, that's really our strength. We do amazingly well as far as programming is concerned, as far as lab and other facilities are concerned, as far as the employment rate is concerned, as far as the uh, average starting salary is concerned, we are way above um, the Canada average. <clears throat> Besides the postgraduate and the uh, degree programs, we also offer over 100 diplomas and advanced diploma programs. So they would be two years or three years, depending upon whether you're going for a technician program or whether you're going for, for a technology program. Um, another thing I would like to mention here, which I'm very proud of, is that Conestoga College was the first college in Canada where the government of Canada allowed us to offer BE, Bachelor of Engineering. Before Conestoga College, only universities could offer BE. Um, Conestoga was the first college um, out of those 16 uh, ba uh, bachelor degree programs we offer. Uh, BE is included in that and all our bachelor degrees have got very strong co-op component ranging from eight to 12 months. We have three intakes, September, January and May. September being our biggest intake, followed by January, and then we have a lot of offerings in May as well. I'm going to just give you a little bit of overview of various schools Conestoga has. Um, I'm going to go alphabetic in an alphabetical order, and after that, I think a um, little bit about the admission requirement, and then I would like to open the floor for, for your questions. Um, the first is um, uh, School of Applied Computer Science. We have 21 programs uh, under that school, ranging from certificates, diplomas, um, advanced diploma, postgraduate uh, programs, and bachelor's degree. Overall placement rate last year for the School of Applied Computer Science was 90%. Um, here I would um, like to talk about one of our bachelor's degree in the School of uh, Computer Science which has gained a lot of popularity. It's called Bachelor of Computer Science Honors Degree. It's a four-year bachelor's degree and it also has 12 months of co-op in it. This degree focuses on big data analysis, cybersecurity, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence. Um, I encourage students when they are doing their co-op to try their hand into different areas, like they can do one co-op in big data, another one in cybersecurity, and the third one in artificial intelligence or, or cloud computing. This way they will have good amount of experience in all three strong areas so that when they finish their, their degree, they ex know exactly what field really resonates with them and they can have a career in that. Besides the uh, degree, we also offer 14 postgraduate programs in the School of Computer Science. Excellent, excellent co-op opportunity. And because of our location, employment for our IT program, computer science program, or our engineering program is not, uh, not a problem at all. And then is our School of uh, Business Studies. We offer over 36 programs. $45,000 was the average starting salary last year. School of Business has got extremely strong co-op uh, program, uh, co-op opportunity. We also offer three very strong bachelor degree programs. All of them have got around eight months of co-op in it um, and 12 postgraduate programs ranging from, from one to two years. Next is School of Community Services. This particular school is very, very popular among Indian students, uh, especially because of our postgraduate offerings in this school. There's a program called Community Service and Social Service Management. Um, and in India, there are a lot of students who choose um, humanities after finishing their high school. So they will be doing BA history, geography, sociology, psychology, uh, BA English, those kind of uh, programs, very nice programs. But when you talk about career opportunities, that gets a little bit limited. And because of the amount of students doing those programs, it becomes very competitive as, as well. And when these students who have done a BA history or sociology and uh, geography, etc when they're looking for studying abroad, uh, chances become a little bit more narrow as compared to somebody from a business background or an engineering background. So this program gives you a platform, gives you an opportunity to, to, to be uh, involved in, um, say, local governments, NGOs, Red Cross, UNICEF, Right? Those kind of areas open up for employment. So very, very popular, very high employment rate because around the world, liberal studies and humanities uh, have gone down in enrollments. 
So when the employers are seeking uh, for uh, students to come and work for them, that pool is, has narrowed down as well in Canada. So in this program, the employment rate is very, very high. Uh, unfortunately, we have uh, limited international seats in that program because it is popular among domestic students as well. So if you have that kind of background, I would encourage you to connect with IEC team uh, soon to take advantage of uh, this program. Next is our School of, uh, School of Engineering. We offer um, approximately uh, 46 programs in the School of Engineering with six bachelor degree programs that also include our BEs. Um, and also 17 postgraduate programs. We have programs in architecture, civil construction, electrical, electronics, computers, mechanical, electromechanical, <clears throat> software engineering. Um, so these are all traditionally popular programs, but in the past four or five years, what I've seen something which became extremely popular in India and from Canadian point of view, it always had a very high um, success rate as far as employment and career is concerned is our food processing. So Conestoga is the only college in Canada which has got a food mini food processing plant on campus. It's an exact replica of the real food plant and our students get to uh, actually work in that food plant as part of their program. We offer four, five programs uh, under uh, School of Food Processing. Two are at a diploma level and three at a postgraduate level. So at a diploma level, we offer a food processing technician. That's a two-year program. We also offer packaging engineering technician. Again, a two-year diploma program. Last year in these two programs, we had 150% placement rate. So there are uh, 24 students in a class. Last year, we had confirmed 36 to 37 offer letters um, at, at the college. So that's 150% placement rate, very well uh, sought after um, uh, programs. Uh, students who have done their, their um, non-medicals in India, or they have done their medical uh, side in India in grade 11 and 12, with mathematics, they can apply for this program. But I've also seen students who have done their bachelor's degree are also coming and doing this program because the uh, career opportunity is so great. Then we have three postgraduate program under this area, food, process, uh, food safety and quality assurance, uh, operation leadership in food manufacturing and structural packaging. So students with a pure science background like biology um, or chemistry, people with microbiology, people with uh, biotechnology, uh, students who have done pharmacy, they would come uh, into these, uh, these three programs. So, um, around four or five years ago, this program became very popular among pharmacists from India. And the reason was, and I, I started talking to the students and I'm like, why would you choose this program? I knew the, I know the, I knew the answer, but I wanted to know from, from the students that why were they choosing? So they had friends who had done this program in the past. And after talking to them, the students told me <clears throat> that when you did pharmacy in India, for example, the choices you had in Canada were like, you go to a college and do a two-year diploma in pharmacy technician. That program prepares you to become a pharmacy technician in Canada, but 90% of the students who were coming for that program did not come to Canada to become pharmacy technician. What they wanted to do was get a platform to come to Canada, and after that, they write their industry exam to become a pharmacist in Canada. Sometimes what happens, those tests are very, very tough. So sometimes what happens is that the students either lose interest and they don't want to do those tests or don't work, don't want to work in Canada as um, a pharmacist, or unfortunately, they are not able to clear those tests. Then their career in Canada is of a pharmacy technician, and that's something they did not aspire to become. So they said that when we do something in food processing, and if we either not clear the exam or we lose interest in becoming a pharmacist in Canada, at least we have a very strong technical career and which made a lot of sense to me. And so, so a lot of uh, pharmacists from India are coming into one of these uh, three postgraduate program. 95% is our employment rate in the School of Engineering and over $52,000 was the average starting salary last year when all the 46 programs are taken uh, together. Next is our School of Health Sciences. We have 15 programs with two bachelor degree program and four postgraduate program. Um, from India, out of the four uh, postgrad, the three postgrad, which are very, very popular, 
are uh, one is our uh, post graduation in nursing number two is our healthcare administration one year program and our two year post graduate program in healthcare administration healthcare and service administration so for the healthcare both the healthcare program the uh, doctors um, of any field be it uh, mbbs ayurved dentist homeopath or, or anybody else from the health background uh, choose that program to come and study at Conestoga. And for the post-graduation in nursing, you have to have a BSc nursing from back home. Plus you need to have um, one year of clinical experience and nursing registration from your, from your country. Uh, Conestoga's nursing graduates are also among the highest to clear the NCLEX exam in, in Canada. So you have to clear an NCLEX exam uh, in order to practice as a nurse in Canada, both for domestic and international students. And uh, from an international point of view, Conestoga has the highest number of students clearing the NCLEX exam in Ontario. Uh, next is our School of Hospitality. We have 11 programs in the School of Hospitality with two postgraduate programs. Our postgraduate program is event management and uh, global hospitality management. Global hospitality management in the past four to five years have gained a lot of popularity because the students have realized that when they were going to other colleges uh, for uh, hospitality at a postgraduate level, they were getting basic skills and they were starting their career as a front, uh, front desk person. But uh, Conestoga's course curriculum prepares you to become a supervisor. It prepares you to become, uh, take a managerial role or a team lead role. So it became very, very popular. It has got a four month co-op as well. So eight months of study and four months of co-op incorporated in the program. Over 90% is the placement rate in the School of Hospitality. Excellent co-op opportunity, especially at a diploma level, if you talk about our tourism, uh, hotel and restaurant management or culinary management, 100% is our co-op placement rate in, in, uh, in those three programs. Next is School of Liberal Studies, three programs. One is postgraduate. The postgraduate program is very popular among our African students, South Asian students, uh, that is India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and some of our Southeast Asian students, which will be from Philippines and from uh, Vietnam. And again, this, the, uh, this program is popular because of the humanity and liberal studies background students. People who have done BA history, geography, sociology, psychology, those kind of programs. This is an amazing uh, program for them. It's a one-year program and community service was a one-year program. So what students do is they will choose either one of the program first, followed by either one of the program, making it a two-year study, which will allow them to work up to three years in Canada. Again, limited international seats. So if you, are, if you have that background or if you are interested in, in something like that, public service, um, please apply sooner than later because I know these programs get full very, very quickly. Next is School of Media and Design, 15 programs, three postgraduate program, ranging in uh, 3D animation, broadcasting, mass communication, all those kind of areas. Uh, we also have a very strong bachelor's degree in School of Media and Design. It's called uh, Bachelor's of Design, honors degree. Very, very popular, eight months uh, of co-op in that program. Uh, in that particular program, we teach you how to become a graphic designer, but we also have a very strong training component in it where we train you how to become uh, a supervisor in a, in, a, in a media house. We train you how to manage graphic designers as well. So you can start your career as a graphic designer, but at a later stage, a couple of years of experience, you also get to get to manage a team because your training has been done in this particular program. Some of the students have gained a managerial position right from the get-go, but then again, that's a student's orientation, whether that's what they want to do to start with or they want to do some good uh, groundwork first before they climb up the ladder. But those opportunities exist. These programs have become very popular in India, in, in South of India, like Chennai, for example, uh, Mumbai and surrounding areas, uh, Delhi, Chandigarh, those are the areas which uh, we are getting a lot of applications for our degree in design. Last is our uh, School of Trades. Um, we have 19 programs in School of Trade, ranging from one-year certificate to two-year diploma. 
very, very popular, both domestic and international. Almost 100% placement rate in these programs. We have very limited seats in that, both for domestic and international, because they are very lab heavy. You'll be spending more time in the lab than in a classroom for any of our trade program. And labs have got limited capacity. So um, we cannot go over. For example, if we have 24 student capacity in a business uh, program and we get 30 students, it's easy for us to adjust six extra students into that program. But into a trades program, we cannot do that. So <clears throat> if you are interested in any of the trades program at Conestoga, I would encourage you to visit the IEC office soon and uh, apply for those programs. Programs are still open for September. And so please take advantage of that. So these were our schools. And I would love to talk about our programs more in depth, but we have limited time right now. And I want to keep a lot of time for question and answers in the end, because I'm pretty sure there are students who have already applied or who are already thinking of applying to Conestoga. So I want to have an interaction with you. Uh, but rest assured that IEC team is very well trained on Conestoga and all the programs. So if you have any questions which is not covered in the presentation so far, or you have some technical question, please visit them. If they don't have an answer, they know how to reach out to me. And then I would be more than happy to, to help you out. As far as the admission requirement is concerned, into our diploma, advanced diplomas, and one-year certificate programs, we are looking at six in IELTS, nothing less than 5.5. For our postgraduate program and our degree programs, we want 6.5, nothing less than six. We also accept tests like TOEFL, PT, et cetera. All those requirements are mentioned <clears throat> on the respective program pages. Uh, we also accept Duolingo right now, it's going on, but I just like to warn all the students that though Conestoga is accepting Duolingo for admission, we have not heard anything official from Canadian Embassy so far that they would accept Duolingo as a proof of English when you're applying for your visa. So a lot of students are calling me or emailing me and asking me, um, should they take Duolingo or not? I don't answer that question as an employee of Conestoga College. Rather, I answer that question as a person with experience dealing with a school like Conestoga. Conestoga is very, very popular among international and domestic students and our seats get full very quickly. I tell them that Duolingo is only $50. So by paying $50, getting a result and uh, applying for uh, a program and getting your offer letter, if that, to me, that's a big deal. So spend that extra $50. Let's pray that Canadian Embassy start accepting Duolingo. If they don't, at least you have your offer letter and then you can write TOEFL or IELTS or PTE, whatever is easily available to you after that to satisfy the, the embassy requirement. <clears throat> Another thing which Conestoga um, focuses on is the overall GPA. So Conestoga does not care about the number of gaps you have. Conestoga does not care about the backlogs you have, but your overall percentage matters to us. There was a question before we started the, uh, this presentation, there was a person asking they wanted to apply for construction management and they said they have an IELTS score of seven overall, but one band is 5.5. Can they be accepted? And the answer is no. If somebody comes and says that um, they have, um, 13, 15 backlogs, they have seven years of gap, but their overall GPA was 70%. Can they apply? Absolutely, they can apply, right? So for 90% of our technology, IT and health programs, we are looking at 65 plus percent. For our business programs at a postgraduate level, we are looking at 55%. So gaps and uh, backlog don't, doesn't matter but your overall GPA is something Conestoga is uh, very much uh, concerned with. So, um, so that, that was about the admission. As far as the tuition fees is concerned for diplomas and advanced diploma, we charge 12,500 Canadian dollars per year. Postgraduate programs are $13,000 per year and our bachelor degree programs are $13,800 per year. This is just the tuition fees. Besides that, um, there is an additional uh, fees which we call ancillary fees that includes your health insurance, government tax, and college service fees, which is approximately three thousand Canadian dollars per year, and which and that is pretty much um, same in 
almost all the colleges in Canada, or at least Ontario. Uh, in Ontario, you must be aware that in Ontario, the government recently allowed public-private partnership. Um, so what it means is that a public college can partner with a private college and uh, offer its program in a different location, like Toronto, for example. Uh, Conestoga does not have any such partnerships, and we do not intend to do any such deliveries. We believe in ourselves, and we will deliver, deliver it ourselves. Currently, we have our own nine campuses in and around Waterloo region and more to come in future. Most of uh, the international students would be studying in our two Kitchener campuses, Cambridge campus, Waterloo campus, Brantford campus, and Guelph campus. So those are the campuses where most of you guys would be coming, coming and studying. And then we have three more campuses which are more are like training centers and uh, domestic students are generally in those campuses. But the ones I mentioned is where you will be. On our website, there is a link for a virtual tour of all our campuses. <clears throat> so if you know where you're going or what program you're taking, you can go on the virtual tour, click on the program area, and then you can actually see your classroom, you can see your lab, you can see the college facilities, you can see the international office, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll encourage you to do that because it'll give you a, um, you know, kind of a first-hand experience. Conestoga College, we believe, like our tagline is connect life and learning. So connecting life and learning is not just a, a, a tagline, but it's a philosophy which the entire college lives by. So right from when you apply to Conestoga College till the time you graduate and find a job, we walk every step with you. With services like airport pickup, housing, orientation, immigration support, academic support, co-op and job placement centers, to personal and cultural help, we have it all and there is no overlap of services. Professional individuals are responsible and proudly help you all with those services to make sure that while you are at Conestoga, your journey is very happy and you be successful. Our international department is here to help as well. And all the students are encouraged to connect with us uh, directly. And uh, um, even though the students know where to go for any kind of help, they tend to come to international. It's a very homely kind of environment for them. They come to uh, international office and we help book appointments for them in various areas. Um, so um, there are tons of services available for you as little uh, few of them I mentioned, but there are a lot more uh, services available, which um, you will never feel alone while you are at Conestoga. Uh, one of the questions I get about housing in Conestoga uh, for Conestoga is like what kind of housing support is available. So we have uh, two housing coordinators at the college. Their job is to help you find homes to live and they give you four options. You can live on campus you can live with the canadian family it's called a homestay which is not popular among indian students uh, or you can rent a room or you can rent an apartment last two are very very common with indian students but um, the housing coordinators give you all the options and help you find the right kind of housing housing for you when you're looking for a house uh, whether you come to Conestoga or go to any other college uh, one thing which i would like to share with you is try to find a place even if it is a little farther away from the college, try to find a place which is close to a mall or something. Because 18 hours, by law, we only teach you for 18 hours. So in a week, you will be in the college for 18 hours. You come once in the morning and you go back once in the evening, right? But your evenings, your weekends, your holidays, all that time is spent where you are living. So if you don't have um, you know, malls or shopping centers or something around you, that uh, first of all makes life a little bit boring, but also um, it will be expensive for you. So if you want to go and buy grocery, for example, now you have to add either extra time or if you're taking a taxi or something, that costs get involved, uh, get added to that. So I always encourage students to find places uh, closer to other amenities rather than trying to find something, okay, I'm, I only live two minutes walk from the college. Right? It's not that there are nothing to do around the college, but if you are staying closer to a bigger mall, then there are a lot more other things you can you know, entertain yourself with. So this kind of brings me to the end of my part. And uh, now I would open um, the floor for 
any questions you might have. And I would encourage uh, either Reshma or Mariana to take the moderator role here because I see there are tons of questions and uh, it might not be possible for me to just keep reading and answering. So <clears throat> either one of you, if you could take that role and please feed the questions to me. Sure. Um, so yeah, Mariana, would you? <clears throat> yes, sure. We can do it. <laughs> So thank you, Banu. Uh, we are having many, many questions in the chat box, in the Q&A box. Um, what we'll do, we'll ask some general questions that uh, many people are asking. And those specific ones, we'll make sure our consultants uh, contact each and every one of you to answer them particularly. Because some questions are very, very long and we won't have enough time to answer them now. So I'm gonna go over some of them. And Reshma, you can also help me here since um, I think you might have some questions yeah, as sure. well. Yeah, yes. some people. Um, what I've done is, yeah, sorry to interrupt Mariana. So um, what I've done is I've just looked into all the questions and I have tried to summarize a few. So um, before I go into that, I would request all of the attendees, the students to take the poll. Uh, so that we get to have an idea about exactly what you want out of this uh, webinar. Uh, the other thing is, so um, Vanu, firstly, thank you so much for giving a detailed explanation, but uh, some of the students have a um, lot of questions regarding the impact of COVID uh, on the intake, the upcoming intake, um, and how is, how is the college going to address this? So please, can you, uh, can you um, explain about that? Uh, absolutely. So um, our May intake has gone online. We had a lot of programs which we were offering in May, but unfortunately only 18 of them can be offered online because the other programs which we had, uh, they were very much lab heavy and on an online delivery, we cannot uh, give that opportunity to the students um, and it will be unfair for the students and the employers if the learning outcome is not the same. So there are around 18 programs we are running online and we have over 1000 students who have registered which are outside Canada. They have registered to study online. Um, so that is going on. Anybody who has registered to study online uh, at Conestogo College in May as a new student from outside Canada, we are giving them a thousand dollar scholarship when they come to Canada and finish their study. So they get a thousand dollars. We are also giving them a laptop um, so that because that laptop would have been, uh, they would have had a laptop when they come here and college would have given them the software and the programs which we have a license for. So because of this pandemic, what Conestogo has done, first of all, a thousand dollar scholarship and also giving a free laptop to all the students. So over a thousand laptops are going out. Um, we have <clears throat> close to 720 students just in India who have uh, enrolled for our online delivery. And uh, we were just in talks with Lenovo and uh, HP yesterday to strike a deal. And uh, it's a very big order, 720 laptops being shipped to India from here, right? So, yeah. so this is something which is happening okay. for September. For September, what's happening right now, the college is looking at two scenarios. Scenario number one is the borders open. And scenario number two, so, sorry, three scenarios. Scenario number two, borders open, but social distancing and all those things will still be in effect. And scenario number three is online delivery. So let's start by one by one. So borders open. Let's say you have a student who's coming into, I just see a question here about um, uh, applied manufacturing management. So let's take that as an example. So there are 24 students in that class, generally. If the borders open, what we have already done, that we will be accepting only 12 students in the class. So that would allow us for the social distancing part. There will be thermometers outside the classroom. There will be gloves provided, there will be masks provided, there will be sanitization done every three hours, and there will be hand sanitizers outside and inside the labs and the classrooms. Any class <clears throat> that can be taught like this, even though the students are physically in Canada, any class that can be taught like this will be on an online delivery because now we are dividing every class into two. 
and we only have so much time during the day to teach. So let's say, for example, there were three theory classes and three practical classes. Now there will be six practical classes because every class has to be done twice because we have divided that into half and all the theory classes would go online. <clears throat> that also answers the second scenario. So some of the business programs, for example, even though the students would be here, wherever it is presentation heavy, um, you know, class discussion heavy, those kind of things, those would be physically done in the college, again, maintaining social distancing, but anything which can be taught online or at least the semester starting in September would be uh, very online heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Third scenario is that the borders don't open or 70% of students, students I think won't decide, but their parents decide, I'm not sending my child. I'm gonna rather wait for one more semester and then I'll send them in January when I know the world is a much better place. Pretty safe. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So in that case, college would um, start doing online delivery as what we are doing right now. The impact of that would be that, again, I keep on using that word, the lab heavy programs would be deferred again. Okay, but uh, even if the students start studying online, uh, will they still, I mean, uh, will they still have eligibility to go into PSW? Because that is one question, like so many students. Absolutely. Yeah, no, sorry. I thought everybody knows this because that's an old news. A month ago, a Canadian government announced that up to 50% of your program, you can study online outside Canada or in Canada does not matter. Uh, as long as you have a valid student permit, um, when you come to Canada and finish the rest 50%, um, you will not be penalized and you will get the exact amount of postgraduate work permit, what you would have got uh, if you would have physically studied there. I'm sorry, I just assumed that everybody would know that because it's a very old news now. So yes, uh, they will be allowed for a postgraduate work permit exactly the same way as if they were studying physically here. Okay, great. Uh, so um, as for the accepted Yes, so you, you, you did say like, uh, of course, the university is accepting a Duolingo and all the other uh, IELTS examinations, uh, I mean, the IELTS indicators and so on. Uh, so no, I did not say IELTS student... I did not say IELTS indicator. Conestoga does not accept IELTS mm -hmm. indicator. I said Duolingo. Okay, sorry, sorry. So it's only Duolingo. Only Duolingo, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. So what about the application procedures? For example, uh, uh, when it comes to application, some students apply with a long gap. So is that fine? Because I have, I see some students uh, on the question answer box who have like 10 plus year, 10 plus year old experience, but they still want to study. Uh, so uh, what are the possibilities of I admissions think, for those? I, I think I answered that question during the presentation that Conestoga does not care about the gap or the backlogs, but we care about okay. the GPA. So the person who has got 10 years of gap and excellent industry experience, and they also had mm -hmm. let's say 70% in their bachelors, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely we'll accept them. Okay. Uh, Mariana, do you, do you have any questions? Yes, there was uh, one student asked about the difference between the one and two year graduate program. Uh, some people are asking about uh, PhD and MBA. And could you please explain about that, Banu, that Conestoga offers graduate programs? So yeah, so university uh, colleges in Canada do not offer a master's degree or PhD. Colleges in Canada offer a postgraduate diploma <clears throat> ranging from one to two years. Some of the colleges would offer a two year um, postgraduate program. And I know the intention behind it is because they know that um, international students would choose those program. Uh, Conestoga does not design their programs like that. As I mentioned during the presentation that we have over 30-35% of the new program development committee from the, uh, from the industry. So we go after learning outcomes. So we talk to the employers and we seek what exactly they want the students to know um, to be considered for employment in their company. And if that learning outcome is achieved in one year, Conestoga would only design a one year postgraduate program. If we need to spend two years with the students to be so that they are better prepared for, for employment, then that program would become a two-year two -year program. 
And uh, uh, Mariana, I'm just gonna skip to something. I just saw a question here. Somebody said, uh, studying a management program, what would be the benefit of studying it at Conestoga uh, as compared to the other colleges? And I would answer that question, not just based on management, I would take all the programs into consideration. And if you remember my first part of my presentation, it was about the ecosystem. It was about where we are located. Um, Conestoga College fortunately is located in Waterloo region, which is a technology triangle of Canada. We have extremely strong industry relationship and those professionals, first of all, guide us um, to design our program or maintain our existing programs. But at the same time, they are also guest speakers to come and address our students. Our students also get an opportunity to physically go and visit these plants. For example, talking about management. <clears throat> we have a program called Financial Planning Services. Once in every two weeks, we take our students to Sun Life. We take our students to Scotia Banks, right? And there they do a shadow training. They will be uh, involved with the employees in the bank and they see how they work. So these kind of exposures, Conestoga is very and that's why our uh, employment rate is very high. That's why we are am among the top ones when it comes to co-op employment rate in the, in the province and also why we are so popular both with domestic and international students. Just imagine like, I mean, uh, we, we are the largest school in, in, in Canada out of uh, Toronto. Like, I mean, uh, there's one school in Toronto, which is the largest, but we are the second largest in Canada. And there's a reason behind it. Oh, Banu, we have an interesting question here. Uh, if I attend online now as part of the remote learning in Conestoga College, will my final degree appear regular or online mode? Regular, regular. There is no difference. Uh, we are, <clears throat> the only thing is that we are not able to physically see you, but the delivery pattern, the certificate you will get, the test, the exam, the assignments, everything would be, uh, would be the same. So the certificate you will get, it will nowhere mention um, online or remote. Okay. The, um, uh, when is the due date to apply for September intake? So September is open right now. Um, most programs are already closed, but there are still some programs open. And first week of June will be um, the opening for January programs. Okay. okay. Um, Banu, so sorry to interrupt once again. Um, are any of the, when you said some of the programs are closed, uh, but there are some students who are interested to apply for programs related to IT and business uh, field. So are those programs still open for the September? So uh, what I would do is uh, your admission team would be the best uh, to know that because I can see our programs, but when you go in your portal, that's where it is live. Right. Mm -hmm. So I cannot answer that question just like that to you. I have to go in every program and see because mm -hmm. uh, it is something which is handled behind the scenes. Right. So because I cannot close the program on our website because it discourages students from exploring more. So your admission team have got access to the portal. So if a student is applying at that time, they will see the real time status whether the program is open or closed. <clears throat> Okay. But business programs are still open. Some of the IT programs have closed. Uh, engineering programs, most of them for September have closed. Uh, but if you have a strong case, uh, please let me know and I'll see what I can do. And Mariana, by the way, that student will get an offer today, the one we were talking yesterday. Oh, that's good. Very, very fast. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, one another interesting question here. Uh, are students eligible at Conestoga if their background is from an open schooling board or an open university? Absolutely, yes. So those students can apply. Uh, we have a list of universities which we accept and which we don't accept with our admission team. Uh, and if you want before applying, uh, please reach out to Mariana and she can connect with me. And I can ask my admission team about your particular university where you're coming from, whether Conestoga accepts them or not. 90% of the universities in India are accepted. There are 10% which we don't recognize or high schools as well. Okay. Uh, what is the minimum deposit to apply? So you apply with a hundred dollar application fees, which is waived right now. Uh, and then once you get your offer letter, then you have to pay $1,500 to confirm your seat. 
Okay, and what if anybody wants to draw withdraw before visa because of COVID, due to COVID? So before the visa, if you want to withdraw <clears throat> because of COVID, we'll do a 100% refund. Traditionally, our practice has been that we would deduct $200, but because of the COVID situation, we are not, right? Um, so unfortunately, if you have to make a decision of withdrawing, uh, what I would do and what I have been suggesting students who were withdrawing for May is to defer your admission because once you get, it's a government college, so it's not about money. So we will refund your money. But during that transaction, you would lose a lot of money. So say, for example, in India, you bought the dollar for 55. And when we return you the money, they give you back at 53. So you lose that two rupees per, per dollar, right? So things like that happen. So I tell students to not ask for a refund immediately. Ask for deferment. And then have some time to think about it. And if you still decide, no, I don't want to go anymore, you, know, you can ask for a refund. Okay. Uh, and could you please tell a little bit about the co-op? Some people were asking about the co-op opportunities and how it works. So co-op is a work term and uh, it generally happens after the first year of your studies. And co-op would be anywhere from four to 16 months depending upon the program. So in that what happens is we have attached a learning outcome with every co-op term. So when you go outside and you work in the industry, we expect you to know, say for example, five things when you come back to the class. And everybody has to know those five things so that everybody is on the same platform. During that time, you work in a company full-time, you are paid and uh, you work as a, as a full-time employee in that company. College has got a very strong co-op department and we find a lot of co-op companies for our students, but students are also encouraged to be proactive and find co-op for, for, for themselves um, as well. And uh, what was I about to say? 99% is our co-op placement rate, right? In, in, uh, at Conestoga College. And we have uh, co-op placements across Canada. With co-op, another beautiful part is that you can do it anywhere in the world. Uh, if you find a co-op employer yourself, uh, the college will interview the employer to know what exactly your duties would be. Thank you. Reshma, would you like to ask any more questions? We are having uh, many, many questions. Um, but yeah, what it's will, all collectively have, about the deadlines. Been, Sorry, continue, Mariana. Yeah, I have just posted my email here. So what we'll do, we'll ask you to answer the questions of the poll that I have launched. And I would like to ask you also, I'm gonna post here again, to reach me on the email that we will forward your questions to our consultants and they will call you and they will uh, email you with all the, the answers that you need. Um, Reshma, yes, go ahead, sorry. Um, yeah, so most of the questions are just about the impact of COVID on the um, intake starting, whether it's gonna be online, what are the tests accepted about co-op and Banu has uh, already answered all of those questions. But yes, there are specific questions on the chat box related to each and every student for which you've already said that. Uh, we can get in touch with those students um, individually. So I think that's... We have an interesting question about the living cost in Waterloo. So it's very, very reasonable. Students uh, in around uh, eight months time, um, that's one academic year, students spend anywhere from five to $7,000 a year. Okay. And there are tons uh, uh, of opportunities available as well. Um, uh, students are able to find that, that 20 hours a week when they, they work, they're able to find good employment in and around Waterloo. Thank you. Uh, uh, Banu, can you please elaborate a little bit about scholarships? Um, so we have few scholarships available online right now for uh, international students who are outside Canada, but there are way more scholarships and bursaries available to students when they are here. So if you go on our international page, in fact, you know, let me just quickly open it. I can show you or send you a link right there.
So these are the scholarships available for all the students outside Canada right now who are planning to come to study at Conestoga. So here's the link in the chat box. Uh, these are the scholarships available uh, which students can take advantage of while they're applying to Conestoga. But trust me, there are tons of uh, scholarships available while they're studying at, uh, at Conestoga. We also have some questions regarding social service management. So we have two programs in that. One is at a postgraduate level and the other one is at a diploma level. Um, so yes, we have those programs. And uh, uh, during my presentation, I had mentioned very, very popular among both domestic and international students. Um, social service at a diploma level for the longest time was not open for international. Uh, but just last couple of years, we have had some seats for international in that, in that area. So both at an undergraduate level and at a postgraduate level, programs are available in social service. Okay, and some people are asking uh, if they graduated in one field, for example, uh, engineering, is it possible to change it to management program? Like they have an engineering background and come and study management? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's very, very common. So students with an engineering background would study uh, our project management, supply chain management, global business management, strategic global business management. So these are the some of the very, very common um, programs at a postgraduate level, which is um, which our engineering graduates prefer to do. Okay, thank you, Banu. I think we cover most of the general questions. I want to uh, ask this guy, Tejas, he has a question. I don't understand, like, how did he get that? He said, 40K as part-time, you mean while pursuing our degree? So what does he mean? Tejas, could you please retype your question with a little bit more uh, detail? So if you are talking about what I mentioned during my presentation uh, in the School of Business, $45,000, that was the average starting salary the students made last year after completing their education into their full-time employment. I hope that answers it, Tejas. We're having like so many questions. Uh, but uh, Banu, can, can you please also tell us like what are the top courses in Conestoga? Uh, in we, terms we, of... Sorry, go ahead. In terms of? Yeah, in terms of uh, student preferences and also like, you know, later on to help the students with their career opportunity. So very, very difficult question to answer. And again, I'm not saying this because I work at Conestoga College, but um, I have seen um, every program, every program at Conestoga has got a lot of attraction from international. So you can see that from under 100 students 10 years ago, over 12,000 today, 181 programs offered to international. Every program has got um, a good amount of international student and all the programs at Conestoga are geared towards an amazing career. So I would not pinpoint a particular area or program, but I would rather say to the students that if you have a, a background which Conestoga has a program to complement, please come because our teaching style is standard across the board and you will have an amazing plot platform to be successful. Now, if you ask me that, what is your strength, right? So like, for example, you go to North India and you say, you know what, man, if you want to eat a paratha, North India might make a good paratha, right? It's not that you cannot find a good dosa in North India, right? But when you go to South India, you can eat good paratha like Chennai, Malabari, Paranata, for example, but dosas are like awesome there, right? So similarly at Conestoga, all the programs are awesome, but if you ask me, what is your dosa? So I would say IT and engineering, that's where we really stand out, right? But again, we have one of the strongest nursing program in the country at a postgraduate level, right? We have the strongest bachelor degrees uh, in uh, business in the country. Right? So all the programs are great. It's very difficult to answer um, one particular area or one particular program, right? Okay, so we have one question on the chat box. 
who says like, I mean, one of the students says, if we pay for regular courses and learn through online courses, as we select a Canadian college for experience of different environments, how does uh, Conestoga see this? And uh, I would also act like, like to add a, like one more aspect to this question. Some of the students in general feel like, why pay for an online course so much as you pay for a regular like, you know, teaching. So what is your take on that, Bhandi? So I cannot answer that question from a college employee point of view. I would answer that question more as a human in the industry. So 90% of the cost to deliver that program is the same. So we are still having okay. the same teacher. Their salaries are the same. College still have me to do this and answer all the questions, right? When an agent is sending us the student, the commission rate is the same. Right. So the only thing which is different for us is our electricity cost has gone down. Right. So we don't have lights on all the time. So the only 10% is the difference, but rest all is the same. And I understand from a student point of view that they say that, I mean, it is not just a certificate. It was uh, an experience as well. That's why um, you might not have seen Conestoga doing a very strong push on enrolling students into the online delivery. We are just providing information, especially me. I would never try to convince somebody to study online because of I would gain a student. If the student sits with me and says, can you please explain me the advantages? I would give them a good explanation that why I think you should study online, but I would not go and convert students to come and study online. So I totally understand the emotions of the students, right? But I hope they also understand that there are a lot of costs which are same. So 12,500 is the cost, uh, is the tuition fees for diploma program. That goes towards uh, the faculty and all those kind of things. Then there is a 13, uh, sorry, $3,000 ancillary fees. That's what students are not paying. So there is no health insurance anymore. There is no gym fees anymore because you are not here. So we are not charging you for that. There is a $750 a year government tax and government would not um, let it go. So you have to pay that, but other ancillary fees, college is not charging anymore. Right? So whatever we know for sure is not being used, we are not charging, but you have to realize that the expenses have not gone down for us. Okay, all right. Um, I hope it answers uh, the respective student who had asked that question. Um, and then we I would have... like just to ask uh, a final question to Banu, because we had many students asking about this the pharmacy technician program. So we don't have a pharmacy technician program and I, I encourage students to look into our food processing area. So we have two diploma programs. One is food processing technician. The other one is packaging engineering technician. And then we have three postgraduate program, um, food safety and quality assurance, operation leadership in food manufacturing and structural packaging. So people with pharmacy background or people who are planning to do a pharmacy technician program. Again, pharmacy technician is a great career. It's a great field, but if you are leaving your home and making money is one of the things in your mind, doing a food processing program or a packaging technician program, you'll make way more money and you'll have way more different and robust career. Thank you. Okay. And Banu, we now have uh, more than 200 students attending this webinar. So first of all, I would like to thank you so much for, for your presentation. It was very helpful. And I would also like to ask you if you can leave a message to these students based on your 20 years of experience living in Canada. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, what, what did you say? What was the last part? <laughs> If you would like to leave a message to our students based in, in your 20 years of experience living in Canada. So what I would say, and, and this is a good platform because I came from India. And uh, so when I first left India um, and came here, I found a lot of international students, especially India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, that belt. They were trying their level best to find any kind of part-time job. During that time, working off campus was not legal. 
So people were getting tons of jobs uh, under the table and they were going after that. Some of my friends came to me and they told me that we can find you a job, right? And at that time, five to $7 an hour, that's what people were getting. So I told them that I did not leave India for $7 an hour and I would not do that. So I became extremely focused towards my studies. I became extremely focused towards networking in Canada. And I'm very proud to say that after finishing my first program in Canada, when I got a job that was the highest paid job in that field that college had ever experienced, the president of the college has writ, wrote a letter in 2001, the president of the college uh, gave me a recommendation letter plus an appreciation letter for, for my accomplishment. And when other students asked me or when I got into my recruitment uh, field, when people were asking me questions, I, I give that example, not as to show off, but to show that one year of dedication and not trying to look for part-time job for $7, $8, $10. I was focused more towards the career and that has helped me a lot. Today, uh, not today, like 10 years after that, <clears throat> I was doing good in my life. I was making good money. People started calling me lucky. And I said, that's okay, you can call me lucky. But when you were washing dishes, when you were going to clubs, right? I was working on projects. I was going out <clears throat> and meeting people in the industry and trying to establish myself, right? So if you want to call it lucky, be it lucky. Canada gives you so many opportunities. Canada government is not foolish. It will not allow three, four, five hundred thousand people coming to Canada as immigrants if there was no opportunity. Canada is not obligated to the world to accept these people to come here. Canada also has got a welfare system. That means that if a family is not doing good, Canadian government gives them money so that they can at least live. So if there are no opportunities, why would Canada open its door for international students and for immigration to come here and become the burden on the economy, right? So there are tons of opportunity, but opportunity would come to the right people. I give uh, one of, another example to people that say, for example, I have a Ferrari and I give you the keys of my Ferrari for 24 hours and I say, go and take it for a test drive and you choose in Canada, Canada's example, if you choose around 4.30 p.m. to go out and test my Ferrari on say Highway 401, right? You will not be able to experience my Ferrari because of the office hour and a Ferrari and Honda Civic would be going at the same pace. But if you choose to go six o'clock in the morning, then you can really feel the power of that Ferrari. Timing is everything. Don't get desperate. When you're coming here, it's like falling from a plane. You're not hitting the ground immediately. You have a lot of time to decide how you're gonna land. So please have patience, please be focused. Do not forget why you are leaving your country. A lot of time, students have a very nice goal, very nice vision, but when they come to Canada, they meet people and they forget about their goal and they get into short-term uh, gains. So please um, write your goals down if you think that you might forget, and that will be your key to success. Yes, I couldn't agree more with you. <laughs> thank you so much, Banu. I would like also to thank our students that have attended this webinar. Uh, our team, I have just posted all our contacts here on the chat box, and our team will make sure that we'll contact each and every one of you and answer to all your questions regarding Conestoga, the programs, and also the visa process, because we can support you on that as well. And thank you again, Banu, for this webinar. It was very great and very helpful. I'm sure our students loved it. And yes, everyone, good evening. And thank you for attending. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.